my pajamas, yes. my dress up clothes, yep. my everything. Um, I used to wear this jumpsuit in conventions until people started posting online that uh, Ernie Hudson has no life on <laughs> So, But you just happened to catch me after the photo shoot, so if you don't mind, I'm going to take off my clothes. Take it all. Uh, yeah, so, so good to see you guys, and uh, thanks for coming out and hearing what I have to say. <laughs> Does anybody have stupid music on the phone? Yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> I'm sure I'd be all beat if they played it. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so good. And we, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. You know? Um, good. So I, I kind of like this sort of half position. <laughs> good, great. So thank you for. Sorry, right, now I'll turn the floor over to you. All right. Grab the mic. How's everyone doing today? Woo! I know I already asked that question. Yeah. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so please ignore me. Um, so does anybody have any questions for any of us? I'm pretty loud myself. Um, how, how did you get cast to be in Ghostbusters? Uh, well, you know, being an actor, um, we, uh, yeah, being an actor, we, um, it's a life of a little bit of uncertainty. You know, you're never sure what's coming up. You're never sure who's going to do what, or the future is a little bit unclear. You just, um, you know, when you hear about things, you, if you're fortunate enough to get an audition, to get in and meet someone, you know that every movie, there's at least, at least 100 people who are up for it and being considered. And so somewhere in the middle of that, you hope that, you know, you'll be the one to walk away with the job. And so I did a movie called Space Hunter. We shot in Vancouver um, with Peter Strauss and Molly Ringwald. Ivan Reitman felt that um, I was all wrong for Ghostbusters because that character uh, was bigger than life and my head was shaved and uh, he thought I was all wrong. And so they refused to see me. And so after about three months, Finally got an audition and and that was brilliant. And uh, <laughs> but uh, but it took him a little while to see that I was brilliant. I had to go back about five or six times. But that's you know the persistence of doing what you do. Is I, I just felt when I read the script that I wanted to be a part of it. And there's one there's a way. I think I was raised to believe that we are human beings. But the greater part of us is being, is spirit. And that if you only recognize the human part, that's, that's all you see. This whole experience is the human part. But there's a spirit part that everything comes from. And that the spirit part is very aware of you and your dreams. And if you can let go, the spirit part will guide you. And so when I went into Ghostbusters, I don't know how I'm going to get in this movie. I just know that the universe has a way of coordinating things that I personally um, have no control over or understanding. I just know that, that it will deliver to me if I can let go now. It's very difficult as a human to not want to be in control and not want to feel that you understand everything. So when I decided to become an actor, there's a part of me that thinks I'm going to do this thing. But in reality, I don't know how to do this thing. I'm from Michigan, uh, which is not too far. Um, and I don't know anybody in the industry, but I know that spirit will deliver in a way that I, I can't plan or predict. And that's been how I've sort of going through my career just trusting that the universe will deliver in the most amazing ways. You know, so. Well, I'm so glad that you got the part. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got the part, too. It was, it, but I will say Ghostbusters was very difficult um, because I wanted the role very, um, very badly. I was a single dad. Uh, money was tight. And um, 
I, I got the script and I really, really wanted it. And then just before we got ready to shoot, the script changed. Uh, and it was really disappointing. And so there was a lot of political things happening that was very difficult for me to sort of get past. And sometimes you have to surrender even though you don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. But I'm glad now, 30 plus years later, that, um, but I had to grow up. I had to really grow up and I had to learn how to sort of surrender, you know, not take it personal. And uh, it was hard. Ghostbusters was, it was fun. A lot of people say, oh, what's the most fun you ever had? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> so it was fun, but it was still a challenge. And uh, it took a long time to really sort of make peace with with some of the stuff. But I love the guys. The guys are great, and uh, and I'm very very thankful that um, I was a part of it. And also see it as a perfect little movie. In spite of all the things that happened, it turned out exactly the way it should have been. But it's hard sometimes to see that when it's happening. You know, when you step out and you look up and it's a big poster and you're not on the poster and you were told you'd be on the poster, it's a little bit hard to kind of go, oh, wait a minute. Um, and on and on and on, I don't want to get into it. And then they did this, and I want to go there. Yeah. But, uh, but it was a growing, it was, and it was probably the best thing that, and I think the reason I'm an actor 30 years later is because I, I learned to, to allow. I think it's really important. So, anyway, more information than ask for, but. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right, so good. Oh. Oh. Test. Testing. <laughs> Test. Oh. I don't know. Test. There you go. <laughs> so, two part, quick question. So, what did you think about the reboot that they did yeah. with Ghost Ghostbusters? And also, to you, what was the, your favorite movie that you worked on besides Ghostbusters? Well, um, the reboot. Um, <laughs> was that a reboot? <laughs> <laughs> no, the reboot. Uh, you know, um, I love the girls, the ladies, who were part of that. I think they're all very, very funny. Uh, I, I don't want to be critical. I, I really, I'm, I'm a fan of Paul Figs, and um, I just would have done it different. I didn't understand why you do a reboot for something so iconic. much of, yeah, part of people's consciousness. I mean, it's not like you can take some movie made in the 30s that nobody knows, and then you do a reboot. I mean, so you say you don't want the comparison, but you're going to redo that. I don't, I don't get that. It's 30 years later, you know, so why can't there be a ghost problem? And then the girls answer the call. And then the girls can be themselves, and they don't have to do a version of us. Yeah. You know, any version of us will make them less attractive than they already are. But you guys you know, have like. It's like, uh, you know, I mean, can we, can we get a hairdresser in here? Fix their hair. <laughs> but your cameos were phenomenal. Like yeah. to see well, you guys in the different I think if we made cameos as ourselves, it would have been a lot funnier yeah. as opposed to Bill Murray being some, what was he being? He was, yeah. A ghost credit guy. Yeah. 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 He fell out the window you know, <laughs> and you drove the hearse. The I wanted to throw him out of the window. I mean, was, <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah, so I didn't understand that. And also, I missed, honestly, in storytelling, what I love about Ghostbusters is. I love the relationship of Bill Murray and Sigourney Weaver, you know, this yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and there was no love story. I thought there'd be a love story with Kristen Wiig and, yeah, oh yeah. and, um, and Chris uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth, yeah, and there wasn't. And there wasn't, you know, he was just, he played really dumb. Yeah. Which was funny for about 10 minutes, but yeah. that's what yeah. you know. Um, so, and I'd like to say, I don't want to be really critical, but I will say our jumpsuits were cooler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and honestly, our car was a whole lot cooler. Oh yeah, their car was awesome. But um, so anyway, so but I'm glad they did it, and um, and I'm and I'm to see a lot of little girls, and they go to myself, and I think it's very, um, very cool that they did something. I just wish they had done it a little different. And uh, and I they, they paid me to come and do a you know cameo in it and that was I've always appreciated it when somebody pays me. <laughs> 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 I'm just uh, when they first asked me it was like really because you make me feel like I'm asking you. See when you ask me then you make it you know enticing you know and uh, you're not making this very enticing. So they it took them a while to come back and say okay. 
We know what's going to happen. Just you got to kiss me first. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm just saying. So it was fun. It was, it was fun to be a part of it. And I'm very, very thankful to uh, to have a movie because a lot of actors do a lot of movies, but uh, there's very few that you know, 20, 30 years later, people still love and appreciate, and, um, and that's cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. And what was your favorite movie like after after Ghostbusters that you worked on? Well, you know, I'm, I'm an actor, and um, I, when I first decided to become an actor, I, uh, like I said, I didn't know how that would happen. Um, I didn't know if I'd ever get cast in something. Um, and so you say a prayer. And so my prayer was to work. You know, I want to do this. And in exchange, when you say a prayer, you say, oh God, if you do this for me, then I'll do this. So my I'll do this is I will always honor the profession. I, 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 you know, I won't take it for granted. Um, and so every time I've been able to get a job, uh, I've always tried to make sure that, uh, you know, that I'm there. You'll never hear about me being late. You'll never hear about me showing up, not knowing my lines. I mean, I work with some actors, I'm like, really not you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so so I guess I'm saying to say that I, if I've enjoyed all of them, but for different reasons. Because every film is a different location. We did No Escape in Australia, and it's just like the, it was like the best location. So when I think about that movie, I think about the location, I have my family there. Uh, sometimes it's the characters that you work with, and I really, and Oz, I love the guys who were part of that. I mean, they just really, um, and the crow working with Brandon was, was, was amazing. Um, sometimes it's the script, the hand rocks the cradle. I loved that story, and I loved that character. So each one is um, something that's a little bit, um, you know, the substitute. I kind of enjoyed being that guy who was a little bit twisted over thinking he's a good guy, but he's really doing awful things and, um, you know, people get confused. So, so, but they're all favorite for different reasons. You know, Thank you. Because no two are really ever the same. Do you, like, do you actually believe in ghosts? Yeah. 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 You know, that's kind of interesting because I grew up at a time, um, <coughs> my relatives were uh, from the South. And they totally believe in ghosts. I mean, they would tell you these scary stories that you really don't want to hear when you're five years old. Because, <laughs> you know, you would never sleep without the lights on. And, um, so I grew up believing ghosts, there were ghosts. So I believe, I believe this is a sort of a path way through to something else that to have this experience we need a body. Without the body, you can't have this experience on this plane. But I believe that we're spirit, and I believe that that's eternal. That's forever. These bodies are not. And so I look at my body, and I go, oh my god, what happened? Um, <laughs> my body says, it's only going to get worse. You know, so we know this isn't forever. So I believe that, yeah, there are there is something beyond this dimension. Now, whether it shows up and freaks you out at night, uh, I'm not sure. Um, but I don't play with it. You know, I get invited to go on ghost haunts. I don't want to go on ghost haunts. <laughs> I have friends who are dying, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to miss you, but don't come and visit me. <laughs> Wait until I'm there, OK? I don't want to see you in my bedroom at 3 in the morning. So. Um, so there's a part of me I think that's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not looking to go into something. We went into an insane asylum and oh my god, it was so freaky and we just felt all these things like, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> and I think maybe I'm a little bit afraid to, you know, of things, a lot of stuff, like drugs. People say, oh man, we got so high, man, I mean, that stuff was like, oh man, I was like, I couldn't even hardly move, and that was like so. I mean, you know what? I don't want to now. I don't want if it was whatever that was. It was so much. I don't want that. You know. I mean, I kind of like the world as it is. I don't need to alter anything. I don't need to see anything beyond the normal. I know I drag on a long time with these answers, but uh, 
So anyway, yeah. So do I believe in ghosts? I believe, uh, but I believe there's a barrier for a reason. And I don't, I think we, we use our imagination to imagine all kinds of horrible things happening. That scared me a little bit because I think we do have the power to create. And uh, some of the stuff I think we're trying to create is something we really don't want. But yeah, so um, I think we, we all share multiple universes. We all have our own universe within ourselves, and everyone is different. Um, and every reality is just a little bit different. Even if you share lives, the way you see the world might be totally different than the way your mate sees the world or your children see the world. Um, so, uh, I don't know if that answers the question, but you know, somewhere in the middle of that. Sure. So, uh, for upcoming cartoon series called Ecto Force, um, if you, Bill, and the rest of the original cast and crew were offered to be in it just like for the remake, would you guys do it in a heartbeat? Well, you know, I'm a working actor, so there's a steady paycheck in it. Um, I, I, I tend to, I mean, there are things I won't do, I will say that. Um, but um, if I was asked to be in it, um, most of the things that I'm not in because I wasn't asked to be in it, or because they wanted me in and they didn't want to pay me. And so, um, but I think that's something very, very different. Um, I wasn't asked to be in the cartoon. Um, they sort of slyly asked me, but then they didn't really want me, I think. They said, oh, we, 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 we didn't think you'd really want to do it. <laughs> so, so anyway, the answer is, uh, if, if, uh, yeah, if, if they asked me to, then I'm sure I would probably consider it, if it's something worth doing. But I will say, at this point in my life, if it's not kind of fun, I mean, there kind of has to be a reason for doing something now. I don't want to just work just to just to have a job. My kids are all grown up, and um, you know why? Why? You know, I did a lot of things that um, you know I didn't particularly think was that exciting or interesting, and but they paid me and I did it. But I don't want to do that anymore. I'm too old for that. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I loved, um, but then it shows me Hollywood. I mean, I did Agent Fowler for three years. I think we did the series. And then they were going to do some other thing with Agent Fowler, and they wanted me to come in and audition. I'm like, no, not really. You know, um, there's something about the industry that tries to minimize you. And so, that's one nice thing about doing the convention. You see people who love the movies and remember the character. Because Hollywood basically tried to say, you know, whatever you did that was, you know, so why should we pay you now? Because, so it's, um, yeah, but I, I love working on Transformers Prime. It was one of the most fun things I did. Um, sure, so, you know, probably a little bit about what's happening now, I guess, I know we can talk about Ghostbusters, but, um, I was, last year I was working on three series. I was doing um, uh, a series called ATV that was for Fox. And uh, we did 13 episodes. Um, I was working on a series with Nick Nolte and Celia Ward called Graves. And I was working on uh, Grace and Frankie. Um, and um, it was at a certain point where I just felt it wasn't really what I wanted to do, you know? and. When you get into your seventies, you start thinking, is this, you know, is this how, you know, because we don't know how long, whatever. So uh, I'm not doing those shows anymore. Maybe Grace and Frank, I might go back and do some more. But um, I, I did a movie called The Family Business that should be out around the turn of the year, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I'm working on a, a Netflix movie now called Natalie Ever After with uh, Sanaa Lathan and Lynn Whitfield was shooting in Atlanta. It was a fun character. I think they um, they saw my arms and they assumed I was in great shape, so they, <laughs> which is not a good thing to do. So we really, really want you, we just, oh, we just did so great. 
and uh, and I agreed to do it, and then I got the script, and I'm an underwear model. <laughs> so, uh, and there are billboards up. We shot the scene with a huge billboard behind me. Uh, which, I mean, I was okay with the billboard, except they didn't Photoshop it. So all the little holes in this thing was just so long. <laughs> so I go, but why? Why would you? And so they said they're going to fix it. We'll see. But anyway, um, but yes, but it, it's a lot of fun. So it's a huge trip. So now it's really about um, you know what's fun to do and yeah, and also realizing that life is not for real. You know, I got a wife who I don't see a whole lot of, and I'm thinking, you know, this is really what I want to do because I bought a car six months ago. I've only driven 300 miles. On it. It's like it's in my garage charging it's a Tesla and it just sits there. So you kinda go, you know what, but this is your life. You know, if we get one time around. Um, so yeah, so that's you know, anyway. Okay, on that positive note. <laughs> I tend to, you know, always, you know, 
have a fun time. Totally with your geniality, it was a lot of fun. Ghostbusters, we had a lot of fun on the set. But I usually do, um, and most of the actors who are good at what they do are usually really fun to work with. Yeah. The ones who are insecure are not. Okay. You know, you might really throwing a tantrum and walking off the set. It's usually someone who's insecure about it. They're not prepared, yeah. and so they don't want the blame toward them, it becomes the cameraman's fault, or the this guy's fault, or whatever, or the script's fault, or it's not, it's just that. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I, it's, yeah, I, I usually have fun on the script. Yeah. Ooh. I don't, I, I don't know one more so than others. You know, some people are a little bit more open to that, but. Yeah. How is it working with uh, David Lynch in the new Twin Peaks? Does he as odd a person as uh, his reputation? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I um, you know, first I did Twin Peaks because I didn't know what I was going to do. They just asked, would you like to be a part of Twin Peaks? And because it was Twin Peaks, I said, sure, I mean, working with David Lynch, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of his work. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. They didn't show you the script. They didn't really show you much of the scene. And, uh, and I never saw it. I always a kid, so I didn't see it. Um, but it was uh, it was fun being a part of. Just yeah, it was very odd. They really were so adamant about me not saying anything about the show. Like I got nothing to say because I don't even know what the hell we're doing. I, mean, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have anything to say, you know. So, um, but it was it was uh, I'm like I like being a part of that. Some things you do because I just like I work with James Bond and Lily Tomlin. I just like being. Working with them, you know, because they are who they are. And sometimes you do that because it's not the character or the script or the money, it's just David Lynch is doing it. So uh, so it's nice to be a part of it. Very strange show. <laughs> and uh, I saw a couple of the episodes. I didn't see mine, but uh, it's, yeah, you know, it's David Lynch. So. Um, I was wondering, is most casts, when there's a group of them, you're like all friends after the set. I was wondering in those pictures if you're still friends with the cast. Yeah, you know, I, um, I, I've, I've come to an understanding as I've gotten older. Uh, I was telling someone, I said, well, oh, you know, um, I think I'm a friendly guy. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're important. <laughs> Whatever that means, I don't know. So. But um, so I get along with everybody, but in terms of friends, I don't really go out drinking, sort of. So maybe I'm, I don't know. I'm, I guess now I, I look at my life and I think, well, maybe I'm a little odd. I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't, I think sometimes when people are into something, if they like to drink, they don't really want you along if you don't drink. You know, it's like you kind of spoil the party. I remember I was doing a movie, um, I hesitate sometimes to say the name, but uh, I'll, well, I don't think it matters here. But I was doing a movie called Weeds with Nick, Nick Nolte, and, and so the story I'm about to tell, Nick Nolte wasn't in this group, but it was a group of the actors. And uh, and I got along with everybody, but we were all friends, but every time they went to lunch, they never invited me. Oh, uh, and it just felt a little odd, so I thought, well, maybe I, I haven't extended myself enough. Oh. So I said, hey guys, where are you guys going? And they said, well, we're going to I said, well, you know, okay, I'll come along. They didn't ask me to come along, but I kind of volunteered. <laughs> so I got in the car with them, and uh, and then they they pull out the drugs. And then uh, and I said, no, I don't, you know. And so um, <laughs> it, was, it was really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> So that I never invited myself to lunch again. <laughs> I had no idea because they share things in common that I didn't share. I'm not criticizing what anybody does. I'm just saying I didn't understand that. Sometimes people, you know, so I don't, I don't really hang out that way. You know, I like them a lot, but I'm not going to show up at Danny's house. <laughs> hey, Danny, how you guys doing? Uh, Donna Holman. <laughs> and uh, and I yeah yeah I guess I'm a little out that way I don't know I, I, I yeah I like people but I don't want to hang around. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious, uh, what's your dream role? If you could have cho chose any role that you wanted to play, what would it be? And also, if you need anyone, anyone help with Milo Judge Tesla, I'm, I'm I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's a great car. I love the love car. It just, you know, um, even though if you get it, if you step on it, it goes from zero to 60 in like 2.4 seconds. So it's like the weirdest thing to get really. Um, anyway, um, the, um, um, yeah, the, the ideal role, I don't know. You know, I, I think being African American, uh, a lot of the normal parts people don't consider you for, so I end up being somebody's authority figure. You know, they have the CIA or the FBI or the principal or the warden. It's always the same suit. Um, that is so not me or how I see myself, even though I know I have a stern look. Um, <laughs> because I, I can see in people's eyes. They, uh, but I think being a single dad, you, you develop a look that says, Sit down. You know, you know what I mean? You just you're in public now, and you know, and I can't grab you by the throat. So, so look at me. You know, and I do that with actors sometimes too, because sometimes the actors get a little bit, you know, overplayful, and you just have to have a way of telling people to back up. Um, so maybe there's something in my voice that comes off a little bit. Uh, uh, ideal role. So uh, I always wanted to be James Bond, but now that I'm 70, almost 72, I don't think it's going to happen. So they, um, you know, um, to be the leading guy and get the girl. We're starting to have a now, except they're all old women now. You know, it's like, it's like um, finally I'm at a point of I'm the underwear model at this stage. Like takes a lot, guys. You know, when I had a body, you know, and I wanted to take my clothes off in Oz. Everybody had their clothes up except me. I was buttoned up all the time. Um, so I don't know. I just I just want to have fun, you know. Um, yeah, I just want to have fun and have fun with people who are having fun and get paid <laughs> and laugh a lot, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that uh, that answers. First off, um, yeah, just be here. I mean, you guys have been so kind, and uh, and I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it means a lot to me to be able to come up here. And I love the fact that you guys are here with your families. And uh, yeah, so just uh, you know, just just really be be good to yourselves. Love yourselves. Love this time. You know, this is not an accident. We're we're in this place and time for a reason, and just appreciate appreciate just how special you are. And thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.